matter. You take action, figure it out. Commit to it, say yes, figure it out. The magic is always in the work that you don't want to do. And there's lots of things that I've not, that I've never wanted to do, but I do them because I know I have to do them. And that's why I'm always going to win. That's it. And I'm always going to win. People might be like, man, that Josh York, he's so cocky. So no, it's called confidence. You need to have it too, because confidence is what's going to win. And confidence, you know, changes everything. Welcome to the Art of Franchise Marketing. Each episode takes a deep dive into the franchise space and explores how the biggest and best brands handle national branding, franchise development, employee recruitment, and localized marketing on a daily basis. This podcast is brought to you by NetSertive, a localized digital marketing partner for franchise networks. NetSertive's Madeline Park talks shop with franchise executives to discuss what's working, what's not, and answers the question, what else can you be doing to excel at the art of franchise marketing? Marketing. All right, welcome back to the Art of Franchise Marketing. Today, we have someone who you've probably seen around the franchise circuit recently. We've got Josh York, founder and CEO of Gym Guys. Josh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So before I get into it, Tell me, and I did not learn about this until the franchise summit you guys run. Gym Guys is an acronym for a, yes. a, a saying, a meaning. What does it stand for? Get you motivated. Goals uniquely yours. Zero excuses. I adore that because I, you know, as a marketer, I was like, ah, oh, Gym Guys, that's great. I'm short URL, makes sense. Uh, and to have such a, a powerful meaning behind it is really a twofold. So before we start getting into gym guys, Josh, tell me who you are, how you got into franchising and, and you know, why the fitness industry? Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, who am I? I'm 40 years old. I am probably the most intense individual you ever meet in your life. Um, trust me when I tell you that I'm very intense. I'm very into fitness. I'm a big ice hockey player. Um, I love my family. I have a wife and two beautiful young kids and, uh, I'm an animal. I just don't quit. I'll never stop. I'd rather, I'd rather die than quit. It just never happened. I would never tap out. And, uh, you know, I started my business in, uh, my parents' dining room in 2008 with a laptop and a vision. And today we are the largest in-home on-site virtual personal training company in the world. We service over 1500 cities throughout the U S Canada and the UK. We're about to be getting a couple more countries coming soon. Can't talk yet. And, uh, we change people's lives. It's, it's the most incredible thing. It's great when you can make a living and make a difference at the same time. So that's what I really love about it. Um, as far as, you know, me getting into franchising, it's funny. So I've probably had more jobs than anyone in the world. It's not even normal. I used to like work somewhere for two days, quit, work for a week, quit. Back in the day, you know, people might be like, listening to this and be like, oh my God. But back in the day, I wanted a beeper so bad. So I worked at Dunkin' Donuts for two weeks so I could buy a beeper. Who remember like beeper numbers? 516. 552 five, 3738. And um, I worked there for two weeks just so I could get a beeper. I quit, but the owner was like really like kind of like took a liking to me and like kind of helped me a lot. And I actually ended up going back there to continue working there for a longer period of time. He owned about like step or eight Dunkin' Donuts. Now, keep in mind, like at this time, I was really young. I was probably 13 years old. And I knew it was illegal what the guy was doing, but I used to, yes, this is crazy. I can't believe my parents allowed this, but I used to bike to this Dunkin' Donuts. My first shift would start at four in the morning. Now, I don't know if this is maybe how I got into the creative morning hours and why I'm up so early all the time, but I used to bike in pitch black. I would never let my kids, by the way. But I used to, I used to bike in the pitch black to this Dunkin' Donuts and I used to work, you know, the 4 a.m. shift. And the owner would come in around eight, nine o'clock. What I, I would only, I only work like four or five hours, depending on the day. And he would always just, you know, talk to me about business. And I was just always very intrigued by it, but I didn't like that, that, that business model wasn't something I was passionate about. And I always, I like, kind of just like kept it on the side and um, I've always been in business. I love helping people, but I always say, you know, being a trainer is like being a doctor. Trainer without clients is unemployed and a doctor without patients is unemployed. So I used to always ask myself, how can I make money when I'm not working? And one day, one of my clients in the late said, Josh, I wish you'd come to my house and don't have any equipment. And people have always done this. No one's actually ever professionalized it. 
And I said, I'm going to do it. And here we are today. So, you know, it's funny because you say I'd never let my kids do that. I probably wouldn't either. I've got three of them. But if it was for a franchise, I might let it slide at this point. So, you know, what was that learning curve like now taking your guys and professionalizing that? Because someone of your, as you said, it's head speech, or I feel like we're very similar. I played professional basketball, mm-hmm. doers, you know, we're not going to sit around and wait, you know, we're going to hustle. Process, which made it not. So, what was that learning curve like? And what were the obstacles I felt were the biggest when it came to really starting a brand with Roundup? Got it. Got it. Um, so, first of all, congratulations on the next class. Well, okay. okay. So, obstacles, listen, I always say the easy way never pays well, the hard way is the only way that pays. Um, I've also never taken on any private equity money, any investor money. I've done this bootstrapped, which is probably the most painful way you can ever go. But I like, I love the pain. And you being an athlete, I'm sure you're going to understand this and appreciate this. Like, you would have to seek discomfort every day. Okay. And if you want to be great, and since, you know, we talk basketball, like, like Kobe Bryant, man, the guy was just an animal, right? But this, this man was like putting in more workouts than you were putting in in like three, four days. He was doing it a day. It, right. it, it's about, you know, just pushing through like the way the listen, success is a game. It really is. And in order to play the game, the one who lasts the longest is the one who's going to make be the most successful and what is going to survive, you know, and, and get to the top of the top. One thing I can guarantee you, everything always works out, but obstacles. Oh my God. I've had severe cash flow issues probably for the first 10 years of business. So bad that like I. Actually, I have had over 300 non-sufficient funds for the bank. Um, you're, talking, you're talking almost $6,000, something like 6000 and change in non-sufficient funds. I was able to get some of that back. But every time I would go to the bank back in the day, I used to be so uncomfortable because I always had a negative in my bank account. Like, I had more negatives in my bank account than sunny days in the Caribbean. Let's put it like that. <laughs> and, and, and I remember I used to walk in and I would always tell myself, one day it's not going to be like this. One day it's not going to be like this. One day it's not, you know, it's not like that anymore. But like, it's not easy. It's easy to say. It's not easy to do. If you are, if you are weak and you fold like a cheap chair, like, you know, some of a lot of the salt marshmallows out there, you'll never make it. It will never happen. You've got to be very resilient. You've got to have the right mindset and you have to understand you're always going to have obstacles. I've had so many obstacles. I, I, I sit here for years telling you every story, but like, Oh my God, from payroll. So I went through 60 trainers before I kept one longer than three months. Think about how discouraging that is. Um, you got to believe in yourself. You got to constantly pump yourself up. You can't listen to what everyone else says. It, even family members, you know, sometimes getting advice from family members is the worst advice you can get. If you're not taking advice from someone who's done what you're trying to do, no bueno, not going to work. Very simple. And, um, you know, if I were to listen to some of my own family members to this day, I would never be where I am. I've always believed in myself. I always believe in the philosophy of fire ain't ready. Sometimes you're not going to know what to do. It doesn't matter. You take action, figure it out. Commit to it, say yes, figure it out. The magic is always in the work that you don't want to do. And there's lots of things that I've not, that I've never wanted to do, but I do them because I know I have to do them. And that's why I'm always going to win. That's it. And I'm always going to win. People might be like, man, that Josh York, he's so cocky. He's so, no, it's called confidence. You need to have it too. Because confidence is what's going to win. And confidence, you know, changes everything. I love that. So, you know, I hear, I hear what you're saying. And I think that, I think a lot of entrepreneurs can kind of agree with the hustle. So now when it comes to your brand, you know you're going to be successful because of your drive. And, you know, if you get, if you can get through negative bank accounts, you can get through you know, having no employees, you know, you're, you're in the thick of the thick of it, I should say. So now we're talking, you know, your competitors now are monster gym, independent, people that want to do it themselves. Like you're forging your way in an industry that technically really is. So, you know, what made people believe that aside from maybe, you know, one or two customers or clients that said, oh, I wish with this, that they could roll out on a nap. Was there anything that you had to do to 
to really test whether this concept is going to prove itself or was it more of a done? Yeah. So, first, well, first of all, I don't even really think we have any competitors. Like, our competitors are most likely personal traders that do this at a small scale. No one does it at the scale we do it at. And we still have clients that still go to the gym. They do once or twice a week. It moves us three, four days a week, whether they're stretching okay. or working out. Uh, also, lots of businesses, corporations, schools, paid programs. We are we are literally on site in all we're everywhere. But uh, so here's the thing: I get I get this question all the time. I get messages like this all the time. It's like, you know, and I, and I hate this. this is my biggest pet thing. Um, oh, I've tried it twice; it doesn't work. Oh, I've tried it for two weeks; it doesn't work. Oh, I've been doing it for three months. Sometimes it might take a year. I truly believe to really, uh, you know, achieve massive success, you need to be in a decade. That's what I believe. I believe 10 years is really what it's got to be at. You know, unless you're in some tech company, you could probably do it faster with technology. But if you're trying to build a real business, a sustainable business, a business that, you know, you're able to acquire and develop skills that are going to stick with forever, we got to put that work in. But for me, I knew the demand was there, right? As I started driving my van up and down the Long Island Expressway, which is the expressway here in Long Island, and started getting calls just kind of driving around at rolling billboard. And I'm like, oh my God, like another client, another client, another client. And it's like, and I'm like, well, I'm really onto something here. And then, um, you know, I remember I got my next van, got my next van, super, super nervous, man. I used to we want to talk about suffering from anxiety. I used to suffer from probably the worst anxiety ever. I used to like throw up in this every morning, probably seven, eight years, every single morning uh, from this anxiety. And I, I've managed to overcome that. I don't lose any sleep over anything anymore. Nothing bothers me. They serve me with a lawsuit, try to take me down. Nothing bothers me anymore because I've trained myself how to develop that 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 unstoppable mindset. But um, you know, at, at at the end of the day, I just saw the demand and I just knew I was onto something. And people used to laugh at me and tell me I was crazy and like, oh, you should go to a brick and mortar location. What are you doing? You're not going to ever make it like this and. You know, and then I'm like, oh my God, I just did a million dollars. Oh my God, I just built the next level. Like, and I knew I was on to something. And, you know, I used to watch a lot of Shark Tank. And I remember, like, it's very rare. It's businesses on it, step figures. And you start looking at statistics, like, not many businesses do step figures. And I'm like, wow. You know, it took me seven years to do that. And now I've got people doing it in, like, the moment, you know? So it's really exciting and incredible. But, you know, my advice is just got to believe yourself, man. The belief's got to be so strong that it just overpowers anyone else that comes at you and tells you you can't be. So, Josh, I think we would get along, or we do, but I think in person we'd also get along very well. We have a similar athlete, you know, fuck with me mindset, if you will. Yep. But a lot of business partners, probably some of your, for sure a lot of your your clients are not going to have that similar mindset. That's a lot of the time, that's why they're using it, right? Like, get it to do it themselves or you know they need assistance so what is your coaching technique as a leader because what i have found is either love me or hate me and that's fine but when you're trying to make money that's not always great so in terms of the leadership aspect how have you been it to help coach others to educate others on brand you know your risk so burning people off being so good question i think uh, I think I might have heard some type of challenge like a one on one basketball game. So if you want to make that go down, or you make that Listen. go down. Okay, that's fine. I'm green light after half court, baby. I mean, I got my balls right here. So I <laughs> can make that happen. I love it. I have a pretty good idea. I'm going to get smoked, but we can make that happen. <laughs> but but um, here's the thing I'm going to give the example of my kids. Okay. I don't actually tell my kids or teach my kids what to do. They seek what I do, right? So I'll give you an example. The other day, the gardeners were at my house, and I and my boys go out, and, and I and right away, my oldest is like, oh, got to get ready for the guys. And he's grabbing bottles of water at snacks, and he goes out, and he's giving them to all of them. He's like, you know, got to show appreciation. He goes, guys, they're working very hard. And I was like, that's right, buddy. A good leader always creates other good leaders. You have to lead by example. And if you don't lead by example, it's not going to work. It's like, it's like, you know, I remember I went on a doctor's appointment, not too long ago, I was trying to find a new doctor. My doctor retired. And it was, you know, it was like last winter. I had a sweatshirt on. I guess the guy couldn't tell if I was a good shape. And he's sitting there talking to me, telling me about how important health and fitness is. Meanwhile, this guy was batting out of weight. At me. So I had to just walk out. That was it for me, right? That's like, so that's like me being the CEO of a fitness company looking like crap. It doesn't work like that. You must lead by example. And 
look, not everyone's going to align, right? I always say hiring is a mystery, firing is a fact. So if you don't, if, if, if someone doesn't vibe with you and you don't feel that energy, that cut it right away. Because look, I know not everyone loves me. 99% of people love me, but not everybody loves me. Not, it's just possible to always tell everybody. But what I do works and what I've done has worked. And I started this from nothing. I turned this into an international company. So that says enough for itself. You know, I used to steer a base with those in years. Now I own this 18,000 square foot building. And I bank of America and attend it on the first floor. And that comes from hard work. That comes from blood, sweat, and tears. That comes from never quitting. That comes from believing. You're going to have winning seasons. You're going to have seasons. season. It doesn't matter. You've got to stay. And I always say good lawyers act, act. Because we can't let everyone do the true bullshit sometimes. You've got to come with it. Like during that made like by the nervous. Of course, I was nervous. Like I, friends were billionaires telling me that I got a furlough and lay off my whole team. And I just didn't feel like that was right. Anyway, I didn't furlough and lay off anyone. It was extremely painful. But the thing, that's pleasure. And you have to, have to fight through it. You know, I, I like, again, I talked about this like me. And what I, the way I look at it is I, I kind of say, oh, try to uh, tap out. Like, I'm definitely going to tap out. Like, if you're trying to test, like, great, come to step in happen. Success leaves clues in belly breaks and uh, small swarm it, flags in. Okay. And so, you know, my next question, Josh, is as you get bigger, I imagine you're obviously very passionate about, uh, passionate about helping people, the fitness journey, the whole, the whole, you know, hands-on aspect. But obviously, as you grow, you're international now. I imagine you're having to pull yourself out of a lot of those day-to-day activities that you might be passionate about because there's just not enough time in the day and you have to start handling things at you know higher and higher level. Do you find it hard to do that because where your path line, you know, really on that ground the fitness level don't necessarily going over budget to be you know, making you know investments here and there. So, you know, what was that like? Because now you're having to translate those really great skills made on the ground. What's more of a high energy? Yeah, it's a great question. Look, um, there's a great book called Eat It by Michael Gerber. Yep. I would highly recommend, like, for those listening, uh, if you haven't read it, or read it, but you're never going to see out doing everything. And uh, I know my skill set and I stay in my lane. Uh, believe it or not, the hardest thing that I ever had to give up was get the pumps. Really? Because I'm so damn good at it, right? I'm an animal and then I become a sales. But at the end of the day, I had to tell myself, like, okay, I'm not going to book, we're not going to book every appointment at four. Like, I got to focus on trading. I got to focus on operation. Proceed. They have to set up the scale. And, you know, you're going to take a couple steps back, but if you want to move many steps forward, you've got to put that work in to create those systems. And if you're not able to do that or don't understand it, that, you got to ask for help or you got to bring someone in who has that skill set. And, um, you know, I have the right, right seats and like to develop our team. Well, and that's, and that's how you do it. But, you know, it, you know, it's like, there's going to come a point. It's like in, in our business, if some of our franchise owners are not doing the numbers they should be doing, I know because some of them are focusing on training the clients themselves. And not many of our franchise owners really do that, like probably less than like 10%. Did. But in some scenarios, some people might, some, they think like, oh, if you know what? I'm going to save the money. I was going to do it myself. No, it doesn't work like that. Like you might save some money, but. If you spend the money and you invest the money and bring on the wall and you focus on revenue generating activities and you get out there to drive more business, you're going to eventually make more money. So that's kind of how it's got to be laid out and skilled. And, you know, my last question now are when it comes to brand dev, what about the, the candidates that come in and go, oh, I really want to own a good guy, but not as fit as Josh and he's going to like me or I'm not going to, I'm not going to fit in that sort of mold that I think I have to be in. Do you guys find that your perfect candidate is someone that's passionate about fitness or are there different kind of levels to ownership in terms of not necessarily having to be the number one fitness guy versus the number one accounting guy? You know, how do you guys approach that? That's a great question. So uh, look, 99% of our owners, like I said, you know, are not doing the trading. They're overseeing the operation. But what I'd have to some owners who have come in, maybe not in the best shape, it's motivated to get in shape. So I love that, right? Like, because 
let me tell you something, you know, I know it's corny, but your health is your wealth. That's so, that's so true. Movement cures everything. You would just, your whole life change if you consistently exercise every day and take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, so sometimes I like that, right? Because, you know, you know, I, I, and again, sometimes, you know, I'm very transparent. So if someone comes in, they might ask that question, like, you know, I'm not in shape. I'm like, well, like, we just change, like, of course, I don't, I just don't have the time to do it. I was like, well, first of all, you can't say that. Number, number two, if you buy Ox franchise, you have a trader that's going to come to it and work you out. But you can also use this as an inspiration. So not just now make money, not just also make a difference, but also change your life to do personally. That's a win-win. So we've had many situations like that. And I love when that happens. I love that. And, you know, my last question before we kind of hit our closing remarks, you're going international now. And I've, I've talked to quite a few brands, donut brand, um, aqua, whip brand, you know, and international can be a beast for a lot of people. Have you felt that going international with Jib Guide has, have you had to flex your brand at all to uh, kind of fit to other cultures? Or is it really one of those culture transcends culture people want to be in shape no matter where you are? It's, it's worked very well. Um, obviously, we're doing research before we go into the right markets. So you got to make sure you select the right markets. But it's just making sure you select the right people, partnering with the right people. And it works. It works. I've had some locations that, you know, for whatever reason, personal issues or something that people work out and the demand was still gold bonkers, right? And there wasn't even a lot of activity. And then when someone else stepped in to take it over, things start really drastically changing. But look, at the end of the day, there's always going to be demand for fitness. That's not going anywhere. People need to take care of themselves. And doctors, doctors should really be prescribing for exercise rather than pills. I'll tell you that right now. I would 100% agree with that. All right. So, Josh, my final two questions, and I never prep anyone for these ones, not that you prep at all for this, but if you had a piece of advice to give to a franchise for, what would that be? And if you had a piece of advice to give to a franchisee, what would that be? Yeah, to the franchise or be a real leader. You know, if you're going to make mistakes, you're going to screw up. That's going to happen. Apologize. Be honest. Be real. Don't be cocky. Don't think you're like, you know, like I always say, like, I jump on some of these calls and I'm like, yeah, I know I'm the founder and CEO. I'm really a team player. Like, it's got to be real. Like, I feel like a lot of people develop this ego problem and it just like, it just really like doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Like, be real. And maybe, you know, maybe we should invest in reading a, read a, read a book about how to influence friends and, and, and uh, the people who, uh, Dale Carnegie, what, how's that, what is that? It's called How to Win. And it's, you know, it's, you know this book I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I'll link it in our. Uh, 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 yeah, it's. Um, I think it's. I think it's how to win friends and influence people. It's a great book, but like, you need to develop your EI, emotional intelligence. It's the number one most important skill in business. And if you don't have it, you're going to you're going to crash and burn. My advice to a franchisee: follow the system. 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 If you think you know it better, you don't. I promise you. If you think there's another way to do it. There's not, I promise you. If you have a good idea, share it because corporate always go on and listen because, you know, a good company is a good listening organization. They might implement it, but just follow the system and put the work in. If you want to make money, you got to spend money. And if you're not owning the community, if you're not out there, especially during this time right now, you should be at every single fair that's out there. You should be at people's faces every single day. And again, you probably don't want to do it. You want to hang out on the weekend and watch football on Sunday. Well, you know what? Someone like me is going to eat your meal every single day of the week because I put that work in all day, every day. And that's what winners do. But follow the system. That's so it. Hey, we speak the same language. I remember I was in high school. I told my dad, I don't want to go work out today. I don't, I don't want to fall shots. Like, I'm tired. And that was just not like me. So I did my dad would be okay. Okay, off, right? No, he looked at me and said, that's fine. But when you beat your competitor, she is out there doing that. And she's going to win. And sure enough, I went out there and almost got frostbite on my fingers that day. So, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. Josh, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to watching Jip guys grow. Um, and of course, if you want to connect with Josh, you can find him on LinkedIn. And of course, check out the Jip guys hear you, even though they probably are the ones coming to you. We'll talk to you soon, Josh. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Art of Franchise Marketing. This show is brought to you by NetSertive. 
We help franchise brands and multi-location businesses run localized digital marketing at scale. To learn more, visit netsertive.com.